Hello, I'm Dennis Kelderman with Team Structures. Today I'd like to talk to you about some ATA repairs that have now been released from Cessna Engineering that will be addressing uh, small amounts of corrosion on trailing link axles. Now this video is going to address those ATA repairs which pertain to Cessna models 510, 525, 525A, 525B, 525C, 560XL, and 560XLS. Now each of these ATA repairs will only differ concerning part numbers and serial number effectivity, which in the case of, the, of these ATA repairs, its serial numbers will be all. So what I'd like to do is, is uh, first take an excerpt from page 3.1 and look at two uh, items that are, are noted here. First of all, in table 3.1 under main landing gear axle repair limits, we see that the repair limitation is not to exceed 20% of the entire circumference of the axle. It reads this way, the total rework circular length at any section along the length of the axle must be less than 20% of the total axle circumference at that section as defined in figure 3.1. Next, the depth total cannot exceed five thousandths of an inch. That's 0 0.005. It's not very much, and so that's going to be very important to us as we do our blending procedure because we do not want to exceed that. The, that description for the uh, maximum blend limitation reads like this, the maximum depth of the repair must be less than five thousandths of an inch as defined in figure 3.1. Here we've got a CJ axle and uh, I'd just like to point out a, a number of things about uh, the, the axle as, as we look at an appearance. Uh, this is one that was rejected and I was able to, to get it from the, the gear shop guys. Uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, make a, a point that it's very important that this axle is removed. Your axle does not have to be removed uh, to uh, accomplish the ATA repairs that, that we're discussing today. So um, next I'd like to say that uh, the, the whole history behind uh, this ATA repair, these uh, actually multiple ATA repairs that we're addressing today is that a customer would have a very small area of corrosion uh, that appeared quite insignificant to him, but we had no way for a uh, certified engineering sign-off. And so uh, we were asked, uh, engineering was asked to uh, take a look at it and see if they could give some relief in this area. So. Uh, that's, that's really the history behind it, and so that's why it's important that we don't think about uh, removing the axle to do this. It stays in the trailing link. This, these blends can even be done on wing uh, with, without uh, any trailing link removal at all. So uh, we don't want anybody going through the expense of uh, axle removal and installation just for this blend. Now, in the case that it does not meet the criteria, of the AT repairs, then of course uh, we're, we're looking at a rejection where the the axle is scrapped. So uh, the next thing we we'll see here is that this axle is primed. Our uh, primer thickness I've already quantified is between two and three thousand thickness, and the with the uh, maximum blend of five thousandths uh, allowed, we have to consider that. You've got uh, basically three options. If you have primer, uh, you can do what I did and quantify the, the primer thickness. Number two, you could uh, mechanically remove it or you could chemically strip it. Uh, I would probably recommend uh, the chemical strip or uh, do what I did as far as quantifying the, the primer. And I, and I think really the most uh, functional uh, practical route is just to figure out how much the primer thickness is. I was uh, in the gear shop the other day and I noticed uh, that that one of the the models uh, didn't even have primer on it. It was just the cadmium finish. Uh, that's normal and then you don't have to uh, deal with the primer thickness. So today I'd like to uh, 
uh, do a little blend here. We'll measure it uh, with our, our uh, depth caliper and uh, see if we fall within our specifications. I call that a depth caliper. It's really a depth micrometer. Now this particular uh, area that I blended is it's probably right at a tenth of an inch for actual uh, corros corrosion area. And, and you see a, a significantly larger area than that. Uh, I, and I haven't done a final blend here yet. Um, the reason I point that out is when we quantify what 20% uh, total uh, corrosion repair is, and that's, let's just say that I've got, by the illustration, one, two, three, four, five different areas. We're going to add all of those links together. Uh, so it's important that we understand what we're quantifying. We're quantifying the original uh, corrosion area. And uh, two, we want to make sure that as we uh, blend this out, say to a 20 to 1 blend ratio, uh, for instance, that we don't calculate the entire, the entire blend together because that's soon going to put us uh, out of our um, allowable blend area. So let's go ahead and see if we can get a measurement here. It's always important on our, our gauge that we're zeroed out. So we want to be right there at zero. I'm using a stair depth micrometer and the, with the v-block base it is very sensitive so what I've been doing is getting the zeroed area uh, very close but still on our straight and unblended portion and then sliding the the device over And it looks like this one here is going to fall within. We've got, we're showing right at four thousandths of an inch. We've already determined that we're two to three thousandths thickness in primer. And so we fall within. I mentioned uh, earlier that, that we want to have a nice blend ratio on this. Typical blend ratios are 20 to 1. So if we figure that we go, uh, if we went a full five thousandths down, it would equate to a tenth of an inch. Uh, what we want to do is just spread that out nicely. Then we're going to follow that up with uh, one to two coats of uh, 10P811 epoxy primer. You'll note that uh, within the ATA repairs, uh, another brand is mentioned, uh, Cessna. Aircraft sells the uh, current is currently selling Axel Nobel brand. Uh, as long as they meet the mill spec that is listed there, uh, that's the important thing. We don't really care what the brand is. So we'll blend this out a little bit more. We'll apply the epoxy primer, and we're done. I hope this this uh, demonstration has been helpful to you. Uh, if you have any question about uh, any of the repair process uh, for these axles please contact us at our Team Structures team line, which is 316-517-6061, or send us an email at our Team Structures email address, which is csstructures at txtav.com. Thank you.